What's up guys? Welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Auto and today I'm going to be recharging my air conditioning. It's kind of crazy to see that it's already mid-October and we're still out in the triple digits. Now the reason why I'm going to be recharging it is because when I turn on my air conditioning I can hear the air compressor clutch kicking on and off. This is what it looks like from the engine bay. This here is called short cycling and it happens when the pressure on the low side drops below a safe amount. What happens is that once the pressure drops below that amount, it shuts off the compressor to prevent any damage. And this could also happen if there was a pressure that was way too high. The high pressure switch would also shut the compressor off to prevent any damage. So back inside the cab again, the temperature pretty much stabilized right around 81.5, which is pretty cool compared to what's outside, but this is not how cold an air conditioning system should be. So here we know that the air conditioning is not cooling the way it should be, and we can see that the air conditioning compressor is short cycling. The most likely problem here is just gonna be that the refrigerant leaked out them somehow. In order to find the leak, you would have to go through every single air conditioning line and component with a refrigerant leak detector, which is a little sniffer that you go under the line over every single line and it smells. If you don't have that tool, you could also use UV dye and you're gonna put the UV dye into your air conditioning system just as you would put in the refrigerant and the UV dye is gonna cycle in throughout the whole system and wherever you have a leak, you're gonna notice that there's dripping and it's gonna light up yellow if you were to go over it with the UV light. If you do have a very small leak, it might make more financial sense to just invest in a, in a can of refrigerant and charge it once every year or two years. But if you have a really big leak where your refrigerant doesn't last you anywhere near six months or so, then you really want to get it taken care of because you don't want to be leaking your refrigerant out into the atmosphere all the time. So here are the tools that you would need to check out your air conditioning system. I would recommend and strongly recommend you to get a set of gauges because this is going to tell you what's going on in your low side of the system and your high side so you can know exactly what's going on with with your air conditioning and know any problems. One of these is probably going to run you around $50 or so if you were to get one like this one from Harbor Freight and if you wanted to get yourself a better one it could easily be $150 to $200 for a good one. One of these ones here this is just the low side gauge which is typically what you're going to run into at a store. Now this this kind is going to be the kind that's usually connected to the can and then you have a trigger or you can just get this kind that's actually the gauge with the fittings. And then these here are going to be your can taps. These ones are going to be going on top of the can and you're going to be using these if you're going to be using your gauges. Now when you look into buying these tools you want to make sure you're buying the correct one because as you can see there's a difference between these two and here in California you can see they charge a $10 refundable deposit which means that they're going to charge you an extra $10 for this can and then you get your money back if you return it within 90 days. There's going to be a difference between this can and a regular can. That's the end right here where you hook up your tap to and then on this one you can see that there's a black valve inside which means that this one here needs to connect to the California can tap which is just flat on the end. If you're in another state or another country where they don't have these kinds of regulations you're gonna see on the top of your can that's just a little aluminum covering and those types of cans are meant to be pierced and that's where this tap is gonna go and as you can see at the very end it has a needle and that needle is gonna go right here and as you tighten it down it's gonna pierce the can. The reason why we have these two different kinds of taps is because if you were to use the one that pierces once you pierce the can, this tap stays there until the can is empty because if you were to take it off, you would just leak all the refrigerant from there. And in order to stop that, California came up with this little thing right here. It has that valve right there and then when you remove this tap, the pressure from the can seals that valve and prevents the refrigerant from leaking out of the can. Now when we're talking about the refrigerant itself, this right here is 134A and it's really important to know which kind your car uses. And if you're right here at your engine bay, you should be able to find a sticker somewhere on the car that says refrigerant. It's going to tell you what kind of refrigerant you use and what's the operating charge. In my case, it's one pound nine ounces. 
It's really important to use the right kind of refrigerant in order for your system to operate correctly. As far as this goes with the R134A, you want to make sure that you're buying straight refrigerant and none of that stuff that has like the max cool or alcohol or whatever into it because all that stuff is going to be filtered by your accumulator or your receiver and dryer anyway and what's going to be left in your system after time is just the straight refrigerant especially those cans that say that they have some sort of stop leak in them what those cans with the stop leak do is that you have your o-rings and all your connections and that chemical that's inside the refrigerant comes in contact with those seals and makes them swell. By swelling, it's gonna seal up any leak that you may have if it's a small one, but by swelling it, it also basically damages the O-ring. So those are a really bad idea in the long run and you wanna try to stay away from them as much as possible. So going back to the tools, I'm really strongly suggesting for you to go out and buy yourself a good set of gauges. This is going to help you out by far. But I do realize that most people trying to just learn how to top up their refrigerant are most likely not going to take this extra step in buying this tool. And it's just going to be sitting there all the time. And especially if you're not a mechanic, you're not really going to use it. So you're probably going to opt to buy yourself one of these or like I said, a can that already has this on top of it. So for the beginning part of the video, I'll be showing you how to charge using this style. And then at the end, I guess I'll go ahead and double check it with my gauges and probably talk a little bit more about why it's really important to use this kind. So to get started, you want to identify your AC ports. So right here we have the high side and over here on the accumulator we have the low side of the system. And these air conditioning tools, both of these gauges will only fit on their port. So there's no way to put the low side gauge on the high side port and vice versa. So the first thing I gotta do is get this onto the can tap. So I gotta make sure that the valve is all the way open and then put it on top of the can and just twist it. Once it's nice and tight, you're ready to go. One other thing that I forgot to mention is now that we're going to start touching the refrigerant, you want to make sure to get yourself some gloves because if this refrigerant comes into contact with your skin, it may cause frostbite. So just be careful. You also want to have safety glasses so this stuff doesn't get into your eyes. So with this on here, now we can start opening the can. As you heard right there, it just allowed the refrigerant to flow. Now one disadvantage about this is that the refrigerant just got in here but the line was empty before I used it, which means that it has air in there, which also means that it has moisture in there. And moisture is always bad for your air conditioning system. That's another reason why I recommend to go ahead with your gauges, because you can bleed that, but right here, there's no way to bleed this gauge. To add on to the moisture thing, the reason why you don't want the moisture into your air conditioning system is because the moisture, it reacts with the refrigerant and it starts turning into acid over time. So that acid is gonna eat away at all your lines and all your components. That's how you get little pinhole leaks on the evaporator and the condenser. And it's also gonna damage your O-rings. So that's how you get leaks at the O-rings as well. Now that I've got refrigerant into the hose, I'm gonna go ahead and open the valve back up. So the needle goes all the way out and it's no longer opening the valve. So now we're over here on the truck and I'm gonna connect the gauge with the can onto the low side port. So I'm going to be removing this cap and you can see it's also marked with an L and that L is for low side. You pull back on the collar and as soon as you push it in it'll snap into place. So I'm going to pull back on the collar and right there you can't pull it off anymore so it's right where it's supposed to be. So right here with my gauge connected I can see that it's over 100 PSI, which is telling me that there is air conditioning refrigerant inside there. The system isn't running, so the pressure in here should be at ambient temperature, which like I showed in the beginning of the video is we're over 100 degrees, so this is gonna be over 100 PSI. So the refrigerant has a relationship with the temperature, the ambient temperature, which means that the hotter it is outside or ambient temperature, the higher your pressure is gonna be on here. Once your compressor starts running, the needle should drop around 30 to 40 PSI right there in the green. Now that I've got everything hooked up and ready to go, I'm gonna start the truck with the air conditioning on max. Once you turn on the car, you wanna make sure that your air conditioner right here is all the way to 100%, all the way on cold, and max air conditioning. Right now that the truck's running, you can see that the needle 
is going down and then the compressor turns off until the pressure rises up to a certain point and then it's, the compressor runs again until it gets too low then it cuts off and it just keeps going back and forth. What I'm gonna do now is start opening up the valve to allow refrigerant into the system right there. You can see that the refrigerant started going into the system because the needle started going higher. Once you start getting more refrigerant into the system, you're gonna see that it, it starts taking longer to shut off the compressor. In other words, the compressor is gonna run longer before it shuts off. So again, I'm gonna open it up to allow a little bit of refrigerant to get into the system again. And you wanna turn your can from 12 to three so the refrigerant gets into the system. You'll start feeling that the can starts getting cold and that's because it's losing pressure and it's going into your air conditioning. Now that the compressor is running more or less constantly and it's no longer short cycling, I'm gonna fill it up until the gauge reads what it should be to my temperature. Right now we're at around 100 degrees Fahrenheit, which means that the pressure here should be somewhere around 50 to 55 PSI on the low side. So knowing that, I'm just gonna keep opening and closing as much as I need to to recharge the system until the gauge reads between 50 and 55 PSI. So right now I'm injecting the refrigerant into the system and this isn't when you're supposed to take the reading. When you wanna look at your reading, you wanna back off. So you close the valve again and right there you could see I'm around 35 PSI. So I'm gonna keep going a little more. Once you start getting to the very end of the can, you can turn the can upside down and just move it like this in order to get the last of the refrigerant. And once your can is completely empty and you can feel that it's empty and then it's no longer getting cold, then you can go ahead and back it off. So this closes the valve and then you can remove your can and then install the new can. And then once again, open up the can and keep charging until we have a proper charge. One thing you could do to make this process go a little bit faster is to accelerate the car to maybe around 2000 RPM and that's gonna make the compressor run faster and pull in the refrigerant faster. So right here we just finished up the other can and we're right under 40 PSI, which is a good charge for right now because I wasn't expecting for it to take more than one can so I had to run out to the store and by the time I got back, it's now right around 85 degrees or so. This is pretty much what you wanna see around there. Just under 40 degrees is gonna indicate a proper charge. Now that we're done with this can, you wanna open up the valve all the way so the needle comes out of the can and remove the can. So now I can return this to the store and get my $10 back. You wanna grab the coupler, pull back the collar, and pull it off. So here we are at the vent and you can see that the air conditioner is coming out at around 40 degrees which is great. You wanna make sure that the temperature coming out of your vents is somewhere between 40 and 50 degrees. Again, it's always gonna be in relation to the temperature outside. So the hotter it is, the hotter your vent's gonna be. When it's around 120 degrees, the temperature coming out of your vents is gonna be somewhere around 55. And right now it's about 85, because it's getting dark already. And that means the temperature out the vents is good at 40. Okay, so now that we've verified that the air conditioner is properly charged, and working as it should be. Now all you gotta do is just put the cap back right on here and you're good to go. So to talk about why you would wanna use a set of gauges instead of just the low side gauge like we did in this video, I really wanna say that this is the way to go because this is gonna tell you not only the low side, but it's also gonna tell you the high side and it's really important for you to know both sides of the system when you're working on your air conditioning. Just to give you a quick example, this is my condenser on my air conditioning. Now this is what's gonna transfer the heat from the inside of your cab to the outside. And as you can see, mine is in absolutely terrible condition. So what that would mean is that while the car is idling, it's gonna have a restricted airflow, which means it's not gonna be able to discharge as much heat as it possibly can, which then means that I'm gonna have excessively high temperatures and pressures on the high side. Now knowing that, eventually the high side, if the needle goes high enough, it's gonna trip high pressure switch on your air conditioning and it's gonna cause the same problem that we're seeing here with the low side. Another thing would be that if both of these pressures are too close to each other with your air conditioning running, like this one would be up here maybe in the 80s or 70s and this one the same around 80s and 70s with your compressor running, then that's a 
symptom of a bad compressor. What that means is that your compressor is simply not compressing the refrigerant and it needs to be replaced. So again, this is just to tell you the importance of looking at a real set of gauges instead of just the low side gauge like we used in today's video. Now after doing this, if you have any big leaks, you really want to get them taken care of. This video here was just for those that need to recharge the system maybe once every year and a half or two years. Even for a perfectly good operating system, your compressor shaft is lubricated by letting a little bit of refrigerant seep out. That way the oil gets onto that seal and lubricates it. So just this system by design is leaking a little bit of refrigerant all the time. But it usually takes around maybe five years for you to need a recharge. One last thing that I wanted to mention before I forget is that I'm sure as you've heard that my compressor is already clacking and that right there isn't normal. This compressor is already on its way out. Something's probably wrong with the bearings inside. Now that's a whole nother problem within itself. I guess eventually this compressor could end up locking up and then ripping my belt. As it is, it's not really worth replacing because I've got other problems with air conditioning. As you saw, the condenser is messed up. As it is, that compressor probably already sent pieces of itself flying throughout the whole system. So I'm going to need to replace the evaporator, the condenser, the compressor, and the accumulator, the orifice tube, and that's basically the whole air conditioning system. So as it is, I'm just going to let it run and see when it happens. It's been like this probably two or three years already and the car is at 400,000 miles. Who knows, maybe I'll go first, but we'll see. So with all this being said, I really hope this helps some of you guys out and helped you guys top off your air conditioning. Remember to like, comment, share, subscribe, and all those other goodies. Thank you.